your dad said you felt like he didn't have a way out. It's kind of, I don't know, y'all. It's hard to know what to say when someone is in that position. I didn't know what to say to him. I didn't know how to come for him. Or I didn't even know if my words could help. And then they did. I woke up to an I'm sorry and I love you. He was in the bathroom, like sitting. And he had taken pills that were on the counter. He had a bunch of pictures of me and my sister and his family just on the bed. I was scared, like I was just so distraught. I didn't know what to think or what to do. I hadn't talked to my dad in months, so it was just kind of like a lot of regret going on and just uncertainty. And um, I felt like he was already gone. I don't know why, but I just was like, dang, like I miss these opportunities. He's really gone. And I knew that if my sister like were to call me and tell me that he, he did pass away, I needed to be around my church family. I needed to be around people that could pray for me. So I knew I had to get to church, like it wasn't an option for me. So I went to church, I called my sister and um, in the middle of service and she was telling me that he was on his way to the hospital. When she went there, he was unconscious and that she would let me know like when they got to the hospital. While I was in service, like, I was just crying and I was just praying to God, like, to get another chance with my dad to be able to be the daughter that I need to be for him. It just really put into perspective for me how important it is to have family and to keep family. Found out he was in the hospital, he was okay. That night, I bought my ticket and flew out to Colorado the next morning. I was so nervous because my aunt was picking me up and I never met my aunt before. A family reunion. That's what I said to one This is our Thanksgiving. Yeah, real time. For real. And that was amazing. And just got to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with her. So like, this was my first time meeting my blood relatives on that side, like as far as my aunt and my cousins. I met my dad and my sister two years ago, about almost three years ago. And then I went to the hospital and saw my dad and he was sad, of course. I didn't know what to say to him. Like, I didn't know how hard it was to be on the other side of the table. And so like I was texting my mom, I was like, I don't know what to say to him. Like, I don't know how to be here for him. How did you comfort him or like how did you know what to say to him while you were, while he was in there? I didn't. Right after they have attempted to commit suicide. It's kind of hard to know what to say, how to be there, when really like our presence is the most important thing. The first thing is to recognize that it's not your fault. If something like this happens, and of course if it's your parent, I know my sister and I both dealt with this, feeling like we could have done something better, feeling like I could have been there more, feeling like like my sister, that was the only day that she wasn't with him and it happened. Try not to stress yourself out if you can't make your parent feel better. Because you can't make them happy. They have to do that themselves. Take him to the therapist. 
encourage therapy. So I talked to my dad a little bit about getting therapy. Just to have someone to talk to, someone that you don't know, that's like an outsider. They don't have any judgment towards you. They don't have any hostility or resentment or anything that any family members might have or even friends at times. What was it like when you talked to him at the hospital? Irritating. He was just talking about why he gave up and all of his excuses, which were just, they're valid, but just a stupid reason to try and kill yourself. And I was an asshole. Why do my you? sister was there, so I had my real life filter next to me. Do you feel like that was anger? Mm, kind of. So I know that it can be hard to connect with your parent, but it's so important to just be there for them, be supportive, and just understand like this is a very hard time for them. A healthy mind and a sick mind are two completely different things. When you have a chemical imbalance and you're depressed and everything around you looks hopeless and you feel like you have no one to come for you or you feel like you're alone in this world compared to being healthy and knowing your purpose and feeling connected and knowing why you're here or at least having some hope for the future you have to look at their emotions and and also see what you can do to comfort them this is not the best time to be judgmental or you know just being rude to them like they're in a very vulnerable place so try your best to be supportive of them and understand that you're not really going to understand why they're in pain or why they're feeling the way they're feeling because it's all in their mind and they're obviously not thinking right right now but you still should respect their feelings in this situation it's so important to recognize your own emotions make sure you don't leave yourself out i know for me i had shock anger guilt and confusion and I didn't want to express that to him. I wanted to express to him how much I love him and how much I care for him. This type of situation is emotionally stressful and mentally draining. It's just mentally exhausting. You have to put so many feelings and emotions and just like your heart just almost just completely pours out. But it's so important to connect with each emotion, feel each emotion and allow yourself to go through the process of healing those emotions because you can't just dismiss it because of the situation that's at hand because you want to be healthy too and you want to take care of yourself while taking care of your parent that's why like alone time doing things that you enjoy i spent time in nature to just feel connected again to like recognize colors and scenery and things around me that uplift me personally in writing and documenting and everything else Even when things feel like they're horrible, it's not as bad as it could be. And God always has a plan. If you're just willing to see it through, you'll be in awe. <laughs> it's crazy. Thank you, God. And I had a great support system. Like I said, the first thing I did when I found out was go to church because I love my church family. They support me. They pray for me. They can tell that things are wrong when I don't even open my mouth. And I just felt showered with their love. And I knew that's what I would need dealing with something like this. My friends and my family also were there for me to talk to and just know that I had a support system behind me. They can pray for you. And if you believe in the power of prayer, you know how important that is. And through this whole situation, God used my pain for a purpose. I had 11 years of depression. I dealt with suicide ideation and suicide attempts since I was 11. I've known what it feels like to be in that situation. And it made me have so much more compassion for my mom and understanding because I was on the other side of the bed this time. I was the one pouring into someone and just feeling helpless like I didn't know how to be there for that person. But God allowed me to pour into my dad and to give him hope and to be a testimony of 
what it looks like to be on the other side what it looks like to come out of depression and to have victory over depression and to win and I thank God because if I hadn't been in those situations myself it would be a lot harder for me to connect to it and I know it sounds crazy but I'm glad that I went through it because that could have done something that could have saved my dad from trying to do this again and just reminding him that he's loved and I just encourage you to know that you're not alone if you've been through this or if you're going through this if you have depressed or suicidal friends or family my heart goes out to you and I know what it feels like just stay encouraged and continue to be present because that's literally what matters the most is you being there and just being willing to listen and to love them and pray for them if you're dealing with suicidal thoughts or ideations please know that you're loved so many people would miss you if you weren't here and you can be forgiven for anything that you feel like you've messed up in the past there's nothing that you can't come back from and with the help of those around you or even seeking help on your own you can get through it and I just encourage you to keep going keep trying because someone out there would miss you bye sunnies